Thanks for joining Ruby on Rails webinar series from jpassion.com. Today's topic is Action View Form Helpers. So let's start with the presentation. So these are the set of topics that we are going to cover. Uh, mostly we are going to cover three different types of form helpers. So we are going to look into each of these uh, type of form helpers. Uh, later on, we're going to look into select box helpers and date and time form helpers. And the concept of helper modules also be discussed. So what is a form helper? So pretty much all web application frameworks have some kind of form helpers. So forms are very important in building web application. It is essential interface for getting user input. The problem of building form helpers using the raw HTML markup language is pretty tedious and hard to maintain. So pretty much all the web application frameworks have some kind of helpers and Rails is not an exception to this. So there are three different types of form helpers in Rails. So type one is called form tag helpers. Uh, sometimes it's called the tag helpers uh, because these helpers end with underscore tag post, post fix. And these helpers are not intended to be used with model, help, uh, model objects. Type and two and three, they are supposed to be used with a model object. So here, uh, so it and model object helpers doesn't have uh, underscore tag postfix, and this model object helpers could be also invoked from a form builder object. So we're going to look into each of these different types of form helpers in detail in the following slide. So type number one is a tag helpers. Again, it ends with underscore tag postfix. So when these form tag helpers, tag helpers are being used, uh, it does create a single HTML input element. And the first parameter of these form helpers, uh, these tag helpers, uh, is always the name of the input. So if we used test, text field tag helper, so this is the way that you are going to use in the Rails view code. And this is the name of the input. Okay, so when HTML code is generated, this is what you are going to see from the above. So this is the name, and this name, the value of this name attribute is coming from this, the first parameter of the helper method. And when this is submitted, it generates this HTML, and in your controller code, you can access the value of this input field using params, and using the name of the input. It's pretty straightforward. And these are examples of tag helpers. Again, you can see every tag helper ends with underscore tag, text field tag, which we just have seen, checkbox, label, and radio button, text area, password field, hidden field, and search field, and form tag. And all these tag helpers are supposed to be used inside this form tag. From uh, for HTML5, so these are newly introduced tags, uh, particularly designed for HTML5 browsers: telephone field tag, URL field tag, and email field tag. So these are examples of usage of text field tag helper. So this is again the first parameter of any tag helper, as we talked about, is the name of the input. So that is the name of the input. And then this could be the value. And then it could have a set of options. So in this case, it will create a standard text field. And uh, you know, you use text field tag helper for getting a small amount of data from the text data from a user. So typically, for example, usage of text field helper is going to be, for example, search query. So these are a set of examples using different uh, set of uh, parameters. So this is the example we have seen already. So you have test field tag and the name of the input, and this generate this. And you can also specify the value of it. So that is the second parameter. So the value in that case is going to be this. OK, 
okay so text field will be uh, set with this uh, value and in this case you have a nil so there is no value and then it is a placeholder placeholder is something like this but it could be actually changed and uh, this is the uh, class CSS class and this is the size attribute in fact there are actually a few more uh, possibilities of text field tag but you get the idea how you can use the text field tag helper okay now all these helpers are supposed to be used inside the form tag helper here so if you use the form tag helper without having any uh, parameters or attributes uh, what it generates in HTML is like this so basically uh, it will generate a form tag and then action well you know because it didn't specify the url attribute uh, it will actually use the current page as a destination of an action and method is going to be as a default for post okay now i'm going to explain this too for rails actually generate these two and that is the next slide okay so these two are actually specifying character encoding so it's generated for all forms whether the action is get or post and this one is for the uh, the uh, request forgery protection, okay? And uh, it's generated for every non-get form. So these two support character encoding and cross-site request forgery protections are automatically handled by Rails. All you have to do is basically using this form tag helper. All right, so as I said before, usage of text field tag helper is actually for having some kind of query in your application. So uh, typically what you will contain is that you are going to use a form tag and typically you're going to use the get HTTP method and then you might have label tag and then you will have text field tag and then you'll have a submit tag. So let's see example of this. So here, you're going to use the form tag and this is the uh, the uh, um, destination okay so this is an action so that gets translated into action attribute for form element and you can specify the HTTP method here we are using get okay and then we are using label tag and text field tag and submit tag so again all this uh, the uh, the tag helpers uh, this is a name of the label and uh, the important field is again is text field tag okay and again this text field tag will be uh, generating html of input and uh, id and name they are the same but what's important is this query so this is id is used you know when you actually specifying like a css style and things like that but what's important in the back end side is this name attribute and this name attribute is the one that will be used as a param and uh, the uh, name attribute value in this query that should be able to be uh, used to access the value of this input form field. All right, so let's do our first exercise. So exercise one is playing around with a text field tag, uh, you know, basically building some kind of search uh, capability. Uh, in your application and then form tech helper 2 uh, we're going to actually look into other tech helpers okay so let's move on to exercise one so we're going to actually build a very simple application called the form helper app so i'm going to go here rails new form helper app and then we are going to actually build scaffolding so we're going to actually perform scaffolding on student model class and the student model class will have uh, name and age attribute and then we will perform migration to create the students table so I'm going to just copy this one okay we go to that application then we're going to perform scaffolding on student model class and then we are going to perform migration so we have a students table gets created okay 
Now, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, change the routes.rb file, okay, so that we can access the uh, the uh, student slash search and student search look, okay. So let's change that file. So routing file is on the config here. So we are going to change this resource students. Okay, so we should be able to access uh, students slash look or students slash search. Okay. All right, now we're going to actually change a controller code so that we have search action. So it's a student's controller. This code. So here we are going to just add Okay. All right, so we just added the dummy search action. And then we are going to change, uh, we are going to actually create a uh, search uh, view, so search.html.erd file. So we are going to go to the view, views, students, and here we are going to create the uh, search html.erd file. So I'm going to duplicate one of this erd file, duplicate, and I'm going to name it as search. So this is the uh, erd file or view file for search action. Okay, so I'm going to then change this to use the form tag. So this is the simplest possible uh, form tag. Okay, and we save them all. And you're going to take a look at the output, HTML output from this. Okay, all right, so we're going to start the server. Rails server. Then we're going to go to local. 3000. Actually, we are going to actually go to student search. Okay, so we're going to go to local host and student search. Okay, so you can see we now see form contents, and if you take a look at the uh, source of that, you can see this contains, uh, you know, the uh, what we have seen here. So it does contain, uh, it contains the post method, and uh, as a default, uh, the URL is going to be current page, and then it contains uh, the encoding as well as the uh, cross-site uh, forgery protection code. Okay, all right. So that's what we have seen. All right, now we're going to actually change uh, the uh, the view to include the search, uh, the uh, uh, text field. Okay, so we're going to actually change uh, the uh, form tag with, so this is the uh, destination, and then we are still using get HTTP method. Then we have a label tag, then we have a text field tag, and then we have a submit tag. And the name of, uh, the name of the uh, input is query. Okay, all right, so we are going to go to Okay, so we're going to change this one to okay. Save the change. Now we're going to refresh the page. So now we have search for, and this is the text field, and this is the uh, the uh, search uh, the uh, button. So again, if you take a look at the code, you can see uh, it generated uh, input with a query because what we have is the first name, a uh, first parameter of this uh, text field tag is query, okay? All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to display all the parameters that are coming from the, uh, the client. So when we cover a uh, Rails controller, we can actually add uh, this statement, uh, debug param statement in your, uh, the root layout file, application HTML ERD file, and uh, then we are going to uh, add this one so that we can actually see what is coming from the client. Okay, so here we are going to go 
views layout. This is the uh, root layout, and we are going to add this line of code. So when we are running this application in development mode, we are going to actually see all the params. Okay. All right. Now we are going to uh, the uh, refresh it. Now, if you take it, you can see when I refresh it, you know, the action is search and the control is student. So I'm going to actually say maybe search, whatever, whatever, search. And uh, now you can see, uh, you know, the, 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 the query uh, is whatever. Okay. And action is still search and students. All right. So that's what we have seen. And again, you can actually see uh, the uh, HTML output. Okay, so that is exercise one. So let's move on to uh, other uh, the tech handlers. Checkbox. Checkbox are uh, used to allow you know is, is allow the user to set set of options. So a user can actually select a multiple checkboxes. So again, the way that you can use a checkbox is checkbox tag, and this is the name of the input. Okay. So here we have a pet dog, and this is a pet cat. Okay, and it will generate uh, the uh, input uh, type of checkbox, and uh, the name is pet dog here, and this is the name of, name is pet cat. Radio button is on the other hand allow a user to select one, so they are mutually exclusive. So if you have uh, two options here, uh, you know user can select only one. Okay, but in terms of format, it is exactly the same. And these are the set of other tag helpers. So text area. So when there is a, you know, the uh, more than a few characters, uh, then you want to use a text area. Password field, hidden field, search field, telephone field, URL field, uh, the email field. Actually, I should have a tax here. Okay. All right. All right. So let's do exercise two. So we're going to actually change the uh, search.html DLB file to include uh, checkbox and radio button. So I'm going to just copy this code. And what we want to change is here. So before submit, we are going to just add this code. Okay. And save the change and refresh the browser. And you can see uh, we have now the uh, um, um, the uh, checkbox and this is a uh, radio buttons for checkbox you can actually select multiple uh, the uh, radio button you can select just one so they are mutually exclusive okay all right so if I select this one and I say search uh, saying and then search and uh, you can see uh, you know the uh, the query is saying and pet dog is one pet cat is one so you know the uh, for uh, checkboxes, the value equal one means it's checked. Okay, and uh, then we also have age adult. This is radio button. Okay, so we chose uh, this one. All right, so that is, and then we're going to actually add a uh, few more uh, helpers. So here we are going to actually add text field tag and uh, search field tag and things like that. Save the change, and again, if you refresh the page, now we are going to see password. So you know this is a password field, so you can see things are actually hidden, and this is a hidden field, so you cannot actually enter anything. This is a search, okay? So if you actually have, you know, the uh, it does have a drop-down uh, search selection, and this is telephone, and URL, and email, okay? Right. Now, if you actually send it, uh, URL, you know, it says please enter URL because it's actually invalid syntax. Okay. And same thing with the email and telephone number as well. Okay. So if I say HTTP and do a passion, and then if I try search, then the uh, email will say please enter email address. Okay. So that is that. Let's move on 